Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadegor Bhaktavanda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So this morning we were introducing the subject matter of Lord Chaitanya staying at Jagannath Puri. We were hearing how different devotees came to stay with Lord Chaitanya there. One of the very, very important devotees who came to stay with Lord Chaitanya was Swarupa Damodara. Now, Swarupa Damodara had spent some time with Lord Chaitanya in Mayapur before he took sannyas. And after, after Lord Chaitanya left to take sannyas, then Swarupa Damodar, he also left Mayapur and he went to Varanasi to take sannyas. Be, in, Ma, in Navadvip, he, he was not known as Swarupadamadar. At that time, his name was Purushottam. But when he went to Varanasi, he got the name Swarupa because he was the servant of a sannyasi. In um, the, word, the name Damodar was given to him by Lord Chaitanya because he was very good in singing and music and he would sing beautiful songs about Lord Krishna. So Lord, uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu made his name Damodara Swarup or sometimes Swarup Damodar. And sometimes it said that Swarup Damodar is Vishaka, the Gopi Vishaka, and other times it said he's the Gopi Lalita. So either way, he's a very, very intimate associate of Lord Chaitanya. Remember Lord Chaitanya, he is come in the mood of Radharani. So Radharani's two best friends are Lalita and Vishaka. So Swarup Damodar was one of the very, very best friends of Lord Chaitanya. Uh, Swarup Damodar would do a number of important services for Lord Chaitanya. And one of the services which he would do was that whenever people would come with a book or a song or a poem which they had written, he would read it first and he would examine it to make sure there was nothing wrong with it. 
。虽然如果他们当然同时一件非常重要的服务，无论谁拿着一本新书，或者写了一首歌曲，或者一首首诗来给主播店家看，虽然如果他们当然都会首先来检查，看看里头有没有错误。Sometimes people will write these songs or write dramas or things, and and the 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 message which they will put in their songs will be the opposite of devotional service. It may have some tinge of Mayavadi philosophy in it. So Swarup Damodar would be very careful to examine it to make sure there was nothing wrong. Some people write a song or write a poem, or write a song. 嗯，那么他们的里面包含的信息呢，和奉爱服务恰恰相反，有的是有的里面就包含着假象中的哲学的色彩，所以斯拉鲁他们达尔就会小心的检查，看看里面有没有错误。嗯 ，Sometimes there will be things. There is a technical fault which is called rasa basa, where there's an overlapping of mellows, a mixing of contradictory mellows. And it's not, in the, it's not proper in devotional service. So Lord Chaitanya would not like that. So Swarup Damodar would look for this. Basa basa. Basa, sorry, basa basa. The meaning is, um, there is that feeling. 嗯，是一种关系的重叠。嗯、呃，在古在奉爱服务当中呢，柴丹家不喜欢这种关系的重叠，所以他入当大就会小心的检查。Lord Chaitanya liked to hear the poems by the great devotees. There were people like Vidya Pati and. Uh, Jaya Deva Goswami and Chandi Das and Lord Chaitanya like to read their poems. Lord Chaitanya likes to read the poems of Vidya Pati. Yeah. Jaya Deva Goswami. Jaya Deva Goswami and Chandi Das. He likes to read the poems of Chandi Das. Jaya Deva Goswami wrote a very famous poem called the Gita Govinda. So Lord Chaitanya enjoyed to hear that, and Swarup Damodar would read it to him. Yeah, Swarup Damodar could sing. The Gita Govinda. He could sing these different poems, different songs, and Lord Chaitanya would feel so happy to hear. So, if Lord Chaitanya, he will make these songs sing, sing, sing. Lord Chaitanya would very much like to hear these songs. Sometimes we go to there's a there's a temple here in Mayapur, and there's a temple of Gaur Gadarhar. The deities are Gorgadarha, and it's in a place called. Uh, uh, it's in a place called. Uh, what's the name of the place again? Uh, Champakahati. There's a temple in a in a village called Champakahati, and they have deities of Gorgadarha. So Jaya Deva Goswami used to live there. 有一个村子叫昌哈哈提村，在那里有一所庙，是高尔格达达尔庙。嗯，在这个村子里，以前曾经居住在这个庙里。And there's one, it's a Gaudiya temple, and there's one brahmachari who stays there. He takes care of the temple, and he can sing the Gita Govinda. He sings the song very nice. 呃，在这个庙里头呢，是有一首一个真守生，他在照顾着这座庙。这位真守生，他会把整部《Gita Govinda》就是唱出来。Of course, we don't understand the Gita Govinda. It's all Sanskrit, and it's all about 
the separation which Radharani feels from Krishna. But those who understand Sanskrit, who are great devotees, they will take great pleasure to hear this very nice poem. So Swarup Damodar would sing this song and other songs for the pleasure of Lord Chaitanya. And he, not only could he sing, but he also knew the philosophy and he could discuss all the teachings of the different uh, scriptures. It said he was just like Brihaspati. Brihaspati is the guru of the demigods. And so when they had any discussion on philosophy, Swarup Damodar would always give, he would be very prominent because he, was, he knew all the philosophy very well. And he was very humble. Nobody even knew how, about how much he knew. He, he, would, he would always be so quiet. He would never speak. You know, he was very quiet. He was absorbed in thinking of Radha and Krishna. So he was he was a very dear friend of Lord Nityananda and Advaita Acharya and he was the life and soul of all the devotees. So uh, he came to Jagannath Puri and he surrendered to Lord Chaitanya. And when he came before Lord Chaitanya, he recited a beautiful verse. He, he had composed a verse explaining the position of Lord Chaitanya. He was describing how Lord Chaitanya is very merciful. He takes away all the inauspiciousness and takes away all lamentation so that we can become pure devotees. The mercy of Lord Chaitanya allows us to experience transcendental bliss and takes away all the idea of material pleasure. And by Lord Chaitanya's mercy, he's, we're able to settle up all the, we may have many disagreements and different opinions about the meaning of scriptures, but like, by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, they'll all be forgotten. And the mercy of Lord Chaitanya allows us to experience the transcendental mellows of love for Radha and Krishna. And 
helps us to awaken our real love for Krishna. So Swarup Damodar prays to Lord Chaitanya and said, may, may that love also be awakened within my heart by your causeless mercy. So when he said like that, then Lord Chaitanya picked him up from the ground because he was offering obeisances to Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya picked him up and embraced him and they both became ecstatic in love and they both fell unconscious. And then Lord Chaitanya said to Swarup Damodar, he said to him, he said, you know, I had a dream that you were coming. He said, so this is very auspicious. He said, I was just like a blind man. But now you've come. It's like I can see now. I'm able to see. And Swarup Damodar said to Lord Chaitanya, he said, he said, please forgive me for my offence. He said, because I left your company and I went to Van Varanasi, so that was a great mistake. I shouldn't have gone there. I should have stayed with you. He said, I'm a very sinful person. I, I don't even have any love for your lotus feet. If I did, how could I go away and go away and leave you? Yeah, I gave up your company, but you didn't give me up. Your mercy has brought me, brought me back. You bound your rope of mercy around my neck and you brought me back again. So then Swarup Damodar turned to Lord Nityananda and he bowed to his lotus feet. Lord Nityananda also embraced him. So all the different devotees, all the important people, he would offer his respects to them and they would all bless him. So then Lord Chaitanya arranged a place for Swarup Damodar where he could stay and he also gave him a servant and he arranged that he should get nice taken care of, give him water, supply of water and whatever else he may need. So then Lord Chaitanya sat with all the devotees and they were discussing the pastimes of Lord Krishna and at that time Govinda came. And Govinda introduces himself, he said, I am a servant of Ishwara Puri. My name is Govinda and my my, my spiritual master, Ishwara Puri, he, he ordered me to come here and to serve you, to serve Lord Chaitanya. 
我介绍说，我是一帅部队的仆人，我的名字叫葛温的，我的领导却命令我来这里服务主，服务查塔尼亚。Just before Ishwara Puri, just before my guru left the world. He told me, he said, after I leave the body, you should go to Lord Chaitanya and give service to him. And another disciple, another disciple of Ishwara Puri, his name is Kashishwara, he's also going to come. But he's just going to visit the holy places first. And so when Lord Chaitanya heard this, he said, Oh, my, my spiritual master, Ishwara Puri, is, he always gives me the affection just like a father. And because he's my guru, so he's like my father. So he's affectionate to me like my father, and he, that's why he sent you here to me. That's his mercy on me. So Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was there, and he said to Lord Chaitanya, he said, you know, it's strange. Why did Ishwara Puri, who was your guru, why did he keep a servant who came from a Sudra family? So we should understand that because, Ishu, because, because Govinda took initiation, so when he took initiation, he became a brahmana. So initially, you know, before his initiation, his family was a sudra, he was from a sudra family. But after he took initiation, because he took initiation from Ishwara Puri, so with the initiation, he became a brahmana. So Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, he, he didn't understand this and he was saying, you know, this man Govinda, he is from a, a Sudra family. How could he become the servant of Ishwara Puri? Ishwara Puri is a Brahmana, topmost Brahmana. How could he take a servant who is a Sudra? So we should understand, Ishwara Puri was an empowered spiritual master. And when he gave him initiation, then he brought him to the transcendental platform. Yeah, that Ishwara Puri, because he's an empowered spiritual master, so he was authorized by Krishna and he was authorized by his own guru that he could accept disciples. And when he accepts them as his disciples, then at that time they become brahmanas. Ishwara 
，当他接受了一个门徒之后，他就可以把这些门徒提升到婆罗门的层面了。Because he's an empowered spiritual master, so he has the energy, he has the, he has the authority of Lord Krishna, and he's empowered by Lord Krishna to elevate someone from the sudra platform to bring them to the Brahman platform. So we should understand the bona fide spiritual master is as good as Krishna, he's the representative of Krishna. And just as Krishna can elevate, bring someone up, the spiritual master can also do the same. So Lord Chaitanya told Sarvabhoma, he said, he said, Krishna and my spiritual master in Ishwara Puri are both independent. Neither the mercy of Krishna nor that of Ishwara Puri is under any rules and regulation of the Vedas. It's transcendental mercy. So Krishna doesn't give his mercy just according to the caste, just according to their position in the society. Krishna gives mercy to anybody who is, deserves the mercy. When Lord Chaitanya gave an example, he said, just like Vidura was a sudra, but Krishna went to his home and took lunch there. So Lord Krishna's mercy depends only on how much love you have for him. Lord Krishna has that independence. It doesn't just depend on rules and regulations. Because Sud Vidura was a sudra by birth. But Krishna could go to his home and take his food there. So the same way Ishwara Puri, he can give mercy to anyone. So he gave mercy to Govinda, although he was from a Sudra family. In the scriptures it said anybody who is initiated and trained by a bona fide spiritual master can become a brahmana. So this is the qualification of the bona fide spiritual master. So, uh, when, we, when we show love for Krishna, then that will bring happiness greater 
than any kind of uh, happiness which we get from following the rules and regulations. When we have natural love for Krishna, it will be much greater than just following rules and regulations. Just like when we chant the holy name, we can experience transcendental bliss. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced Govinda and then Govinda offered his obeisances unto the, all the devotees. But then Lord Chaitanya said to the devotees, he said, you know, he said, this, this man Govinda, he is, he is my God brother. See, he's a, ser he's a servant of the spiritual master. So, he should, I, you know, I should, also, I should be respectful to him. And so Lord Chaitanya said, it's not, it's not really proper that he should come here and serve me because I'm his god-brother and he was the servant of my spiritual master. But he want, now he wants to come and serve me, it's not really proper. But at the same time, my spiritual master told him like this, he gave him the order that he should come and serve me. So what should I do? So Lord Chaitanya was a, it was a dilemma, what to do? He thought, uh, I don't want to go against the order of the spiritual master, but the etiquette seems wrong. But then Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya said, the order of the spiritual master is very strong, and you cannot disobey it. This is the order of the scriptures. And then he gave some examples from scriptures. He said just... Yeah? He said just like Parasuram. Parasuram was ordered by his father to kill his mother. No, Parasuram was, you know, he's a, born in a Brahmana family. His father was uh, Jamadagni and uh, the mother was called Renuka. But what happened was Renuka, she somehow she was a, she, she went to get water one day and when she went to get water, she saw the reflection of the sun god in, in the water and she thought, oh, the sun god is so handsome, he looks so nice and she, he, she, 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 he's so handsome. So her husband, he understood that his wife was thinking like that. So the husband told his son, he told the son to kill his mother. Uh 
他特别强，呃，相貌特别英俊。那她的丈夫呢，就明白了她妻子的想想法，他就让他的儿子杀掉他的母亲。And so the father told the oldest son, he had three sons. So father told the oldest son, your mother was unfaithful, unchaste, kill her. But the, the oldest son, he wouldn't follow the order, he wouldn't do it. So he told the second son to kill it and he wouldn't do it either. So finally, he, called, he told Parasara, he said, your mother was unfaithful, kill her. And then he said, and kill your two brothers also because they wouldn't follow my order. So Parasaram killed all three of them. So the father was very pleased to Parasaram. He said, very good. He said, now you can ask any benediction you want. So Parasaram said, all right. He said, please bring back my mother and my two brothers to life and don't let them remember anything that happened. So father said, very good. Do it. So this is the example about being obedient to the order of the father, Parashram, that he killed his mother just like she was an enemy. And the same way, uh, when Lakshman went into the forest with Lord Ramachandra and his wife Sita, Lakshman was the servant of Lord Ram. He was always, wherever Lord Rama, whatever happened, Lakshman was always there to serve Lord Rama. Yeah, Lord Rama is the elder brother, Lakshman is the younger brother. So it's the duty of the younger brother to serve the older brother. In the same way, it's the duty of the disciple to serve the order of the spiritual master. And, and you, we should do it uh, without considering, we shouldn't consider, oh, is, is this good or is this bad? We should just take the order faithfully and do what the spiritual teacher tells us. And when we do it like that, then it's very good for us. It will be very good for our spiritual advancement. So Lord Chaitanya accepted Govinda as his servant and embraced him. And everyone respected Govinda as a, as a very dear servant of Lord Chaitanya. So many of the devotees, they all used to stay with Govinda and Govinda used to serve all the devotees. Of course, he used to serve Lord Chaitanya and then he would also serve the devotees. Then, 
another person came to Mayapur, he uh, came to Jagannath Puri, and this person was a, a, he was the the god brother of the guru of Lord Chaitanya. His name was Brahmananda Bharati. Brahmananda Bharati. Oh, sorry. Brahmananda Bharati. Right. So when Lord Chaitanya heard this, then he was very pleased. He said, Oh, he said, He is he is just like my spiritual master. So the devotee said, should I bring him here to meet you? But Lord Chaitanya said, no, he's my guru. He said, I should go to see him. So Lord Chaitanya went with all the devotees and they went to see Brahmananda Bharati. But when they saw him, Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya was not very happy when he saw him because he saw that he was dressed with a deer skin. He's covered his body with a deer skin. Yeah, sometimes people, when they renounce the world, they will cover their body with the deer skin, or sometimes they cover the body with the bark of a tree. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he did not like to see this devotee wearing a deer skin. Because one reason is people become very proud when they wear the deer skin. So when Lord Chaitanya went to see Brahmananda Bharati, he, he, he's, he's, he pretended he didn't see him. And he said, where, where is Brahmananda Bharati? Where is he? I don't see him anywhere. So then the devotee said, no, he said, here, this is Brahmananda Bharati. He's right here in front of you. But Lord Chaitanya said, no, you're not right. This is not Brahmananda Bharati. You must be still talking of somebody else. Because Brahmananda Bharati, he wouldn't wear a deer skin. So when Brahmananda Bharati heard this, he could understand that Lord Chaitanya did not like him to wear a deer skin. So then Brahmananda Bharati thought to himself and he thought, actually Lord Chaitanya is right. I only put on this deer skin for my own prestige, for my own pride. I cannot get over the, the maya simply by wearing a deer skin. Mm -hmm. 
So he, he vowed, he said, from today on, I'm not going to wear this deer skin. So Lord Chaitanya was very happy when he heard this, and Lord Chaitanya immediately arranged for him to get the dress, the saffron dress of the sannyasi. And they, somebody went and they brought a set of cloth to give to Brahmananda Bharati and he put on the dress of a sannyasi. And when Lord Chaitanya saw him in his sannyasi dress, then Lord Chaitanya came and offered obeisances and fell down at his lotus feet. And so Brahmananda Bharati said that, he said, I, I'm, I'm very afraid, I'm very afraid that you would neglect me. He said, I, 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 I don't want to do anything against your wishes. If I, I know if I, do, if I don't please you, then you will, you will just neglect me. You won't, you won't, you'll pretend you don't know me. So your your instructions, your behavior are very important for us. So then Brahmananda Bharati began to speak, he said, I can see two Brahmans. One Brahman is Lord Jagannath and the other Brahman is you, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yeah. In the form of Lord Jagannath, you don't move. But in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you're moving. Lord Jagannath is a deity, so he is not he is a Brahman, but he's not moving. And, and you are Sri Ch you are Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You're moving here and there. But you're you're Brahman also. You and Lord Jagannath, you're both the same Brahman. In one form you're moving, and the other form you're not moving. So now there are two Brahmans, both of you are both living here at Jagannath Puri. And one of the, in the form of Lord Jagannath, you're black, 
But in your form, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you're very fair. He said, but both of you are delivering the whole world. So Lord Chaitanya then replied, he said, he said, actually, to tell you the truth, he said, because, because of your presence, there are now <laughs> Lord Chaitanya said, yeah, he said, uh, you know, I'm you, both you, you're Brahmananda, and I'm Gorahari, we're both moving. And Lord Jagannath is sitting, he's not moving, he's sitting tight and not moving. So Brahmananda Bharati, he was trying to show that there's no difference between Krishna and the living entity. But Lord Chaitanya, he wanted to prove that he and Brahmananda Bharati were both jivas, and that although they were jivas, they're both Brahman. And, yeah. Tamantosha Brahman. Tamantosha Brahman. The, the, the and the Brahman, they are both Jivas. They are both Brahman. Yeah. They are both Brahman. They are both Brahman. And there is one Supreme Brahman, Lord Jagannath. So Brahmananda, he wanted to say that Jagannath and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are the same, that they're both the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But Lord Chaitanya appears to be moving and Jagannath not moving. So they were they were having a little discussion argument here. And so Brahmananda Bharati asked Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya to arbitrate, to give the final decision. He, 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 says that, he said that we need you, we need, some, we need somebody to mediate, to de make a decision who's right. And then Brahmananda says, the Brahmananda, he says the living entity is in one place, is localized. But the Supreme Brahman is everywhere, all-pervading. All That's what the scriptures say. Brahmananda 
们呢说，生物体，它们是处在一个地方的，它们是区域化的，但是至尊的饭，它们是遍存万有，无所不在的，这是经典的论断。Yeah, we know that Krishna in the form of Paramatma is everywhere. He's within the universe, he's within, the, within all the elements, and he's even within the atom. But the living entity is very small, and he's just in one place. So, Brahmananda Bharati, he says, Lord Chaitanya, he purified me by getting me to stop wearing the deer skin. This is a proof that he is all pervasive, that he, he must be everywhere, he must be all powerful. And, and I am definitely under him, I'm not equal to him. So this is actually correct that Krishna is the supreme Brahman and the living entities are his tiny parts and parcels. Yeah, they're both persons, but the Supreme Brahman is the predominator and the living entity is predominated. Or the Supreme Brahman is the master and the living entities are the servants. And then Brahmananda quotes a verse from the Vishnu Sahasranam, from the Mahabharata, describing about the appearance of the Lord. Suvarna varna he mango varnangas chandranaganti sanyasa krishna santo nishta shanti parayana. So this, this is a verse that describes Lord Chaitanya. It says he has a beautiful body, a golden colored body. And every part of his body is very beautiful and constructed very nicely. So he takes the renounced order of life and he's always peaceful. He's always chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. And his, his, arm, his arms are all decorated with sandalwood pulp. And he wears a thread from the deities of Lord Jagannath around his chest. Uh, 
So when Sarva Bhoma Bhattacharya heard this, he said, yes, I said, I think Brahmananda is the, the winner. I think he has defeated Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya said, yes, he said, it's all right with me. He said, because he said, Brahmananda, he's like my spiritual master. He's the god brother of my initiating spiritual master. So I accept him also to be like my guru. So the, the guru is always right over the disciple. The, the, the disciple should always accept the opinion of the guru. Uh, so Brahmananda said, well, this is not the real reason for your defeat. They said, no, there's another reason. Yeah, and Brahmananda said, he said, Krishna always likes to be defeated by his devotees. And, and Brahmananda said, he, he described, he said, you know, he said, since my birth, I was always meditating on the impersonal Brahman. But since I've seen you, now I'm experiencing Krishna. So Brahmananda was describing how Krishna likes to be defeated by his disciples, by his devotees. And there's an example how Krishna promised he wasn't going to fight in the battle of Kurukshetra. But when Arjuna's life was in danger and Bhishma was coming to kill Arjuna, then Krishna picked up the chariot wheel and he rushed towards, he rushed towards Grandfather Bhishma. So he broke his promise to save the life of Arjuna. So, Krishna did this to show that his devotee, that Krishna can break his own promise just to protect his devotee. So, in this way, Brahmananda, he's arguing that I know that Lord Chaitanya is actually Krishna himself and he's the Supreme Brahman. And I'm, Brahmananda said, I'm just a devotee. And Brahmananda says, he said, since I, ever since I've seen you, I'm 
feeling Krishna in my the presence of Krishna in my mind, and it's like I'm seeing him before with my eyes, and I want to chant his name. So, Lord Brahmananda said, I, I can understand that you are Krishna himself and I want to serve you. Just like Krishna does, uh, just like uh, Bhuva Mangal Thakur, he was an impersonalist, but he, he somehow he became a devotee and he gave up all his impersonalism. So Brahmananda said, my condition is like him. I don't, I'm also changed. I was an impersonalist before, now I've become a devotee. Brahmananda he said, he said, I, I was initiated into the yoga system and I was on the path of impersonalism, but now I've become a devotee and I want to, I want to follow in the mood of the gopis. He said, this is due to the tricks, just like Krishna tricked the gopis. Krishna is very cunning, he tricked the gopis. And so it's in the same way he said, you've tricked me into becoming a devotee. <coughs> and Lord Chaitanya said to him, I know you have a deep love for Krishna for a long time and you, you, wherever you turn your eyes, you simply become more Krishna conscious. So Sarvabhama Bhattacharya said, actually you're both right. I have to accept both of your conclusions. Without having love for Krishna, you cannot see Krishna anywhere. So by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, Brahmananda Bharati has been able to see Krishna. But when Sarvabhoma said this, Lord Chaitanya got upset. He said, what? What are you saying? Don't say things like this. This is a blasphemy. I'm not Krishna. I'm not, I'm not the God. I'm not the Supreme God. I'm simply devotee. I'm trying to be devotee. Sarvabhoma said this, Lord Chaitanya got upset. He said, what? Why are you saying this? This is a blasphemy. 
，我不是亏心呐，我不是神，我不是自尊主，我只是努力的在做奉献者而已。Yeah, uh, uh, And if somebody glorifies you more than is actually your position, then this is another kind of offense. This is a, a, a not good. This is a blasphemy. Okay, we will stop here. We、we'll、ask if there's any questions. Yes, there's one question. Vedavati, Hare Krishna, Dimbai Guru. Rasa Basa. Yeah, Rasa Basa. Yeah. Well, it's it's. It's a mixing. It's it's very complicated. It's very not very easy thing to explain. But the idea is that we we.、Uh, We may think of Krishna. We may think of the living entity to be like Krishna, and we may try to put the living entity on the same level as Krishna. And whatever we think for Krishna, we we give to the living entity. There's an example. There's one man. There's. It's told in the Chaitanya Charitamrita how one man came there. To Jagannath Puri, and he'd written a poem about Lord Jagannath and about Lord Chaitanya. And so Swarup Damodar heard the poem, and so when he read it, then he asked the Brahmana about it. And and when he asked the Brahmana about it, then he said, "Yeah, yeah, you've committed a great offence." He said, "Because you have described Lord Jagannath to be made of wood, you have described the body of Lord Jagannath to be mat material, to be matter." He said, "This is a great offence." Hmm. And said、so、the body of the supreme Lord is not material; it's satchit ananda. So, if you describe the body of the supreme Lord to make, be made of wood, then this is an offence. And、so this is one simple example, rasa basa. If we try to, if we make the the body of the Lord compare the body of the Lord, we describe the body of the Lord to be material. Then this is an offence. Yeah, we say Acharya Vishnu Shiladir. 
Narashu, Vaishnavi, Jati, Bhuti. It's an, a great offence to think of the body of the deity to be made of wood or stone or material elements. The body of the deity is transcendental. Yes. Is there any uh, other uh, question? Yes. That the one you you know, Hare Krishna Kumar, please accept a humble basis. How do we gain confidence in Krishna's mercy? Because we often see his mercy for others and do not see it for ourselves. Well, we have to see everything as Krishna's mercy. Sometimes Krishna gives, that's mercy, and sometimes Krishna takes. We should think that is also mercy. We are made of the mercy of the spiritual master. So a devotee always thinks like this, that, that everything, whatever happens, it's the mercy of Krishna and my spiritual master to help me to advance in Krishna consciousness. So sometimes, of course, the mercy may come in the form which we didn't want it, but we should think that this, this is what Krishna wants to give me. We have to accept it as mercy. So the devotee has to have that vision to always see the hand of Krishna and the hand of the spiritual master in everything. We have to learn to take advantage of the mercy. We have to take advantage of the mercy so that it will help us to become more attached to Krishna and spiritual master. Is there any other question? Yes. Yeah,一个是Sati。Sati,Sati。你在Word的莲花族。他是让我们因为对父亲的全然了解。原信心才做到全然服务。前些时间,有奉献者给我看了一位佛教高僧破落的资料。里面就有关于这位有上万知识体
because he knew his father and he had a good face to his father. Previously, one devotee showed me a material about a Buddhist monk, a high-level Buddhist uh, monk. Uh, he, he had a uh, 10,000 followers, but uh, he had uh, do some and not some. He had done something wrong to the female disciple, and finally uh, became known to the public, and uh, he fell down. Therefore, this devotee uh, raised uh, some uh, question about why we should uh, become completely completely surrendered to our spiritual master. So my question is that, uh, what to do with this kind of situation? Well, you have to consider everything in terms of the time and the place and the circumstances. Yeah, somebody is the spiritual master, and so we accept him as the spiritual master, and uh, he he's, he may be doing very nicely, and, and and so there's no problem. But then, if there's some spiritual difficulty, if he gets in difficulty, gets does something wrong with women or something, then you have to understand that 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 he's not very well situated as a, that he's not. Proper as a spiritual master. Uh, we shouldn't think that because he was not qualified as the spiritual master, therefore nobody can be qualified. That is not proper. Just like you may be looking for gold and you get some imitation gold. So it doesn't mean all gold is imitation gold. There is real gold and there's also imitation gold. So in the same way, there's real spiritual masters and there's persons who are not real spiritual masters. So they have to look again and find somebody who's properly qualified. That's a spiritual teacher. So you can answer them like that. That that person, that person was not qualified, but that does not mean that nobody is qualified. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Well, we, we say in ISKCON at least, first of all you accept shelter of Srila Prabhupada. Take Prabhupada to be, to be your spiritual teacher. He's the Shiksha Guru for all the devotees in ISKCON. Now, when we take initiation in ISKCON, you should understand the actual connection is actually not just simply with the Guru, but it's a, you're becoming a member of ISKCON. So the connection with the spiritual master we see in Iskon there are many spiritual masters and they're all you can consider all of them as your spiritual teachers. And if, if you feel that the person who you took initiation from is not fully satisfying your demands, that you want more, then you're always allowed to go to other people and take instruction. We're encouraged to go and hear from other spiritual teachers. And the purpose of their instruction is to help us to develop a stronger connection to the disciplic succession. Because it's the disciplic succession which will take us back to Godhead. So you may feel, you know, if I, we, we said, we don't encourage devotees to put all their faith into one person. That is the point. Because if then if that one person has problems, then your faith also has problems. We've seen, we've had experience like that in ISKCON. The, the guru had some problems, spiritual problem, and when he had problems, then all of his disciples, they all left this God, or they all gave up Krishna consciousness. So it's important that we put our faith firmly in Srila Prabhupada and also in we we should have several we should have several Shiksha Gurus as well as our Diksha Guru. So you see that those Buddhist people they had all their faith on one person, and the one person got problems, and then all of the disciples, they all got problems. 
那么我看到，就是佛教当中呢，这些佛弟子他们一个人就满怀信心，结果这位大师出了问题之后，他的门徒也都遇到了问题了。嗯。So you see how dangerous it is if you have faith on just one person. 所以你可以看到，信心都放在一个人身上的危险。So in ISKCON, we don't encourage like that. We say, you don't just put your faith in one guru. You have to have also shiksha gurus. And, you, and the purpose of the gurus is to connect you to Prabhupada and to the disciplic succession. So in ISKCON, we don't encourage guru. And even if all the gurus, if all the gurus and shiksha gurus, if they all have problems, you still have the disciplic succession. You still have a connection to the disciplic succession. 即便所有的不，所有的训示不，都出问题了，那么这个成员。Do you understand, Sati? Yes, Beijing那边是不是需要这样？就是咕噜有时间往后面的问题回答，然后如果北京现场那边如果呃还有其他节目安排呢，那我们就可以去安排其他的内容，好吗？嗯嗯，好。OK。接着回答吗？对，是的，
拉玛那的巴提两个人是神兄弟，所以就他就处在采甘尼亚的领导师的层面上，这是一种外在的表象。嗯、呃，然后当采甘尼亚呢，他因为他扮演的是伊斯拉库瑞的这个门徒的角色。So Lord Chaitanya was playing two different parts. So Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya, he actually played two roles in this situation. When he gives instruction, he was instructing as the Supreme Lord. So when he gives instruction, he was instructing as the Supreme Lord. So when he gives instruction, Okay. Yeah. Ah, 下一个问题是 Shruti Rupa. Two, three, three question. 帮 Shruti Rupa, Hare Krishna, Dimai 老师 Guru, 请教两个问题。我最近学习中发现自己在和人相处时，愿意接受力所能及的服务，尽可能作为观察者，提醒自己减少评判，做好服务，但心里不愿意虚情假意。任何人浪费时间聊世俗话题，你问过这是不是灵性修学中必须经历的过程，还是我的心变得冷漠和坚硬了呢 ？The first question is that, uh, Hare Krishna. Recently, I found that when I um I deal with the others, I would like to accept the service that is within the, my own. Capacity. I try to remind myself to reduce judgment and only as an observer to do my service well. But in my heart, I do not want to respond to 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 talk nonsense, mundane topics with the others. Where hip hop um uh, in hip hip hop uh, spoke many topics. So, um, Guru, uh, is this the procedure that um, I must uh, experience during the spiritual practice, or does it mean that I have become my heart has become very cold and very hard? Well, you have to consider more carefully about. Why you're taking why 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 your mood is like that? If your intention is to just simply be more absorbed in Krishna, then it's all right. It's not wrong. Then you should be careful to observe your own mood. If your intention is to be more absorbed in Krishna, then it's all right. But if you if you feel any critical if you feel, uh, you know, if you're looking down on the other people and you're not appreciating them and you're uh, disrespecting them, then it's not good. You, you may like to accept the association of other devotees and try to always keep them in Krishna consciousness by your association. If you're very expert, then you can keep them always in Krishna consciousness. You can help to remind them about Krishna. One of the things which we learn from the scriptures is that Krishna is everywhere and Krishna is in everything. Therefore, remembrance of Krishna can come all the time in every, in every circumstance. 
So as I said, sometimes the pure devotee speaks and sometimes he is silent. He is not obliged. You may feel like speaking sometimes and sometimes you may not. It's up to you. Yes, next question. What? In charge of what? Well, we have to understand everything belongs to Krishna. All the money is there. It's meant to be spent for Krishna. And Prabhupada said we can make, a, make we may make a lot of money and, and we spend it all for Krishna. He said no harm. If we spend it for Krishna, that is the best use of money. So devotee is devotee should not be miserly. They should not mind to spend for Krishna. We will not like to spend for ourselves. We will hesitate to spend for ourselves, but we won't hesitate to spend for Krishna. Yes, well, we celebrate all the festivals, that's important for us. Devotee likes to celebrate the festivals. We should always celebrate the different festivals, like uh, Janmastami and Ramnomi, Gorpurnima, Nishinga Chaturasi, different appearances of the Lord's incarnations. We like to celebrate these occasions. Mm, we should all the festivals. 
就是封建人都喜欢庆祝不同的节日，比如说 the m a s t a m i the r a n a 的新年日，都都都拉的新年日，还有新的新年日，还有不同化身的新年日。And by celebrating these festivals, we develop more devotion for the Supreme Lord. Okay. There are um, difficulty problems in devote, devotee's life. How do you distinguish it is the continuation of their karma or it is a mercy from Krishna to purify us? For example, um, our relationship with our family member, the material karmic relationship with family member, will it change? Yes, well, certainly it can change. The, the, the question is, how much have you surrendered to Krishna? You know, when we come to Krishna consciousness, we have to fully, we should fully commit ourselves to Krishna. And so that, if, we, if there's a full commitment to Krishna, then it, whatever happens to us is not karma anymore. It's Krishna's arrangement. 是的，这个关系更加那里，嗯，关系是可以改变的。但是问题的关键在于我们自己有多么沉，我们和我们的 Krishna 的沉浮程度，嗯，我们 Krishna 有没有全心全意的和、呃、沉呃沉向 Krishna 承诺呢？沉浮 Krishna， 如果我们自己 Krishna 是全全盘的交给 Krishna 的话，那么在我们身上发生的就不是业报了，那么就是 Krishna 的安排了。So we have the next one. Yes. Ah, 下一个是 in comment from you know. Thank you for for this flow of nectar, Krishna Kumar. 刚才又读了一遍阿扎米奥奉献者的本次拯救，回到当下又不自觉的为青春期的孩子焦虑。请问 Guru， 我该如何把读经典的觉知转化到生活中 ？Just now I have read. Uh, the story of uh, Jamil. So uh, uh, at the present moment, um, in my practical life, I will become very worried for my child who is in the ten, in the ten. My because my my children, I will become unconsciously worried for my child. So how can I apply this consciousness in the scripture uh, to change it, to uh, apply it to uh, my practical life? Well, simply by chanting Hare Krishna and by simply engaging in devotional service, we'll learn to depend more on Krishna. We c we're not the supreme controller. We have to surrender and see what is Krishna's plan. Naturally, you want the best for your children. That's natural. Being a mother, you think about the welfare of your child. But we have to also understand that your children are individual living entities and they have independence. They can choose for themselves what they're going to do and how they're going to live in their life. Mm, 
So you do your duty up to a certain point, but at a certain point then they're independent, they do what they want. So then you have no more control over the matter. So you have to be thankful that you've tried your best, you did your best, you did your duty, and you pray for the best for them in the future. Okay. Yes? Finished? Yes, finished. Okay. Well, okay. Hare Krishna. Mama Ganshiya Guru Mani, give Mama Jantai the funny, Ganshiya Soy the function to link thing, Mama Jufu Niman Chira Kwaila. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Ki.